guys, welcome to today's class. Super excited to have you guys here with me. That's good. that's what we're gonna go over today. Not necessarily the perfect haircut for fine hair, but I wanna talk about fine hair, really break it down. Got a mannequin back here, Danielle, one of my stylists here at, at the salon, colored it for me, so it's really cool looking. And I'm gonna show you guys some tricks on that, on how to kind of go through fine hair and how to think about it. Let's pop over to the mannequin. I'll show you guys the color before we start cutting it, but it's pretty cool. Uh, she did a great job melting different tones throughout it. She used Used Paul Mitchell Pop XG to color it. Really cool fantasy color. You can see all through there and we're going to cut. So let's break down some fine hair thoughts before we start cutting. Because what you wanna do, anytime you have a fine hair guest in the salon, you wanna assess where the hair starts to get weak. Because a lot of times, if you look at the hair kind of from this point down, it doesn't look, or this point up, I guess you could say. From this point up, it doesn't really look weak. It's really from the neck down or the shoulder uh, point down where this is a little bit weaker. So that's what I would want to focus on with my client. So I would look at and assess where the hair starts to get a little less dense, a little weaker towards the ends. And then that's where I want to base uh, my haircut in. Now I'm going to do this dry today because I want to be able to see the density as I'm working. And the sectioning is going to be pretty simple as well. So we're going to work through that first. I'm going to do the sectioning and then I'm going to break it down over on the board. So right here, comb out the mannequin a little bit. And what I want to look for is basically going from recession point back to the occipital bone. And I'm going to draw a curved line from this point back to the occipital bone. So right here, comb the hair in the direction I want to take it. And then I draw a curved line back. It's like that. I'll hold the rest of the hair in my hand and turn it so you guys can see. Now we're going to come across the occipital bone. And then I'm going to draw a line on the opposite side and meet. Sometimes it's easier if you just want to kind of break this up and you want to clip the one side away. Um, if the layers are a little bit shorter, I'm not having really any issues here working through it. This is really exposing some of that beautiful teal blue color. All right. So now as I comb it up in the air, I'm just looking for balance on both sides. So I want to make sure that both of these sides match up. So now I'm going to twist it up and clip it away. Slide that clip in. Now I'm gonna go through and just assess the bottom, kind of feel through it. I'll look for those weak points. We're gonna be cutting kind of a medium length haircut. What I find with fine hair is that the longer it gets, it's obviously gonna get weaker towards the bottom. This hair not only has been on the head quite a bit longer, but fine hair tends to kind of break off as you're blow drying it, different things. It's not as strong. You're gonna have more density in this area than you are in the ends because some of this hair is already just growing back from breaking through blow drying, ironing, all of that stuff. Just kind of meeting it up with the hair that has broken off a little bit, that's just gonna give you more density throughout the cut. Most likely, you're your fine hair doesn't get to this point, right? So as it's growing, some of it breaks, now you gotta kind of work and grow it out again. Let's just kind of make it a rule that if you want a fuller looking hairstyle, number one is to get it to a length where your hair likes to stay dense. So look for that density. I'm gonna say this is about shoulder length is a good uh, length for somebody with fine hair or go shorter. But going longer is just, it, your hair's just not gonna look as full. You can definitely hit it with a wand, give it some wave, makes it feel a little bit fuller, but in the end, it's definitely going to always look weak at the bottom. Now that I have it sectioned away, I'm actually going to hit it with an iron real quick. We're going to add a little bit of Neuro Protect to this bottom section, and I'm going to iron over it just to smooth it out because I'm going to cut a nice baseline to begin with. Is there a video tutorial for the color? Not yet. All right, so I'm just going to iron this nice and smooth here, bottom section. And if a client came in, and obviously it's in the best interest to blow dry, to shampoo, blow dry, do all that work, smooth out this bottom, you should do that. So just just kind of assess what your client's hair is like. Don't just start cutting it dry. Really uh, blow it dry, nice and smooth. And then as you're working through it, you'll have better results because obviously you'll have a nice smooth palette to what you're working with. What kind of iron is that? This is a Paul Mitchell Express Ion Style Plus. I like this iron because it's nice and skinny. Uh, so it's easy to work in tighter spots. The better to cut wet or dry. So Faye, that's a great question. I like cutting dry on fine hair sometimes. So it's not an all the time rule. Sometimes, especially on longer hair, because I can see that density. When the hair is wet, it's harder to see how much density you're actually leaving on the head. Sometimes it can be a little deceiving one way or the other. So 
just making sure that I know exactly how thick the hair is gonna feel when it's done. But I like doing it straight, so then when I go through it and cut it, obviously um, I get a nice straight line to it. Then we can add a little bit of wave to it at the end. All right, so now I've got the hair smoothed out and we're gonna cut one length. So let me go over to the board, show you guys something real quick. So our thought process here is that we're, we sectioned off this disconnection. That's what we're dealing with right now. So what we're gonna do with all of this hair underneath, we're gonna pull that hair straight down and cut it blunt. Not the best drawer, but we're gonna bring it straight down, cut it blunt at the length that we want it. What that's gonna do is it's gonna keep all of the density, as much density as we have at that length. And we're gonna cut our line. Now, the reason we wanna do that is because we also wanna add layers to this fine hair to create some movement, but I don't wanna take away and layer all of it. So being able to keep almost from that parietal ridge, that recession point down to the occipital bone, all of that cutting at one length is gonna keep it full. And then we'll start layering the top. I'm gonna do all of that parallel to the floor. Just lift it straight up in the air and start point cutting into it and softening some of those layers. So you can see here, same thing. All of this is gonna be brought down, cut blunt at that point here. And then all the top is gonna be brought straight up, cut into kind of a square layer on the top of the head. That's our, that's our work through with this haircut. So first things first, we gotta cut blunt. I'm gonna use a wider tooth comb. Uh, this is available on our shop, Shop FSE. I'm gonna use a wider tooth comb because I'm cutting it dry and I don't wanna hold too much tension on the hair. I really just wanna comb it down to control it and then let the hair just hang where it naturally wants to. And I'm gonna start cutting my line. So you can see how it's, you can't see really anything from this point over, but then when you get here, you really start to see through the hair and even more at this point. So I'm gonna go a little bit below, but I wanna cut my line right down here. And this is where we'll have the fullest point in the hair. So right here, bring the hair down. I wanna make sure that you're directly in the back. Obviously when you're working in a mirror, you're gonna be able to see straight on with the mirror, make sure the client's looking straight ahead. Their head's not tilted at, at all. Their legs aren't crossed, so they're sitting straight. And then you can go through and you can cut your line in the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the comb down, wide teeth right here, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut my blunt line on the bottom. Look how full this looks compared to how weak this looks right here. That's gonna give you a much fuller effect in fine hair. And then you can go through and you can obviously give this a little wand iron to build it up, but it's gonna have it nice and thick. If I were to elevate that part of the head, what's gonna happen is it would lighten up the ends and it wouldn't, it would make it feel way less full. So here we go, moving around the head. I'm shifting over into the corner. I'm gonna cut a round line around the head shape and I'm just holding the hair still with my comb. And the reason I'm doing that is because the hair would tend to push uh, with the scissor. This is a really sharp scissor but, and it has a little bit of grip on the hair. A lot of people's scissors kind of push the hair a little bit, have it more of a, a hot knife through butter feel, but that feeling is the hair pushing a little bit. So you want to make sure when you're going through the hair that you have the comb there just as a safety. And this would be right above the shoulder, kind of right on top of the shoulder. So I don't have to worry about it. If we were going a little bit lower, maybe on shoulder, that's where we chose to cut this. And I would have her turn her head a little bit. And then I would cut it a line in the most natural fall possible. So same thing on this side. And because I'm using the comb uh, to hold the hair in, in place, I can come through here and I can cut back towards my line. If I were just cutting the hair like this, I would not want to come back at it. I would wanna go this way to push the hair in the same direction, but because I'm holding it still with my comb. So again, here, down, just matching those two lines up. There we go. Nice blunt feel to the haircut. I'm not worried about total outcome of that yet because I'm gonna go through and do the rest of the cut and then I'll work that perimeter even more and then we'll go through and style it. So now we've got our length cut. I'm gonna go through and work the top section. Like I said before, all of this is gonna kind of come straight up. I'm gonna let this down for now and you'll see it kind of come over everything. Now you could continue to cut this hair blunt if you wanted, but you'll see that that's hitting right where that density I was talking about. So where it gets a little bit thinner. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna comb this into a couple sections. So I'll comb it back, find their parting. They're going to wear, comb it back here. One of those days. So here's the parting, part it right there. And then I'm gonna find what splits the front and back. So right here, down to the hairline. We talk about this all the time. So there's that hairline. This is kind of the hair that's going to sit in the back of the head. So I'll clip the rest of this away. I'm gonna do the same thing 
on the opposite side over here. Find the front and the back down to the hairline. All of this hair wants to fall into the back and all of this hair wants to fall into the side. Flip that away. Now we've got our back portion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna elevate it up. So I'm gonna stand on the left-hand side of the head. So left-hand side of the head, vertical section, straight down the center back. I'm gonna bring this up. Now my guide, I will see kind of from the bottom, you can decide, do you wanna cut at that guideline here or do you wanna go a little bit past it? If you go past it, it's gonna push hair below the, um, the perimeter line. That's okay. You can always go in and point cut that or cut it blunt at the end. And that's what I'm gonna choose to do because I wanna push a little extra weight to the bottom. And I don't want extra short layers on the top. So here we go up like that. The guideline falls out. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna point cut through the hair. So now take a look at how full when you take away these pieces, how full the back of this looks right here. It starts to kind of elevate out. Uh, it's got that fullness to it. Um, and that's the same thing I wanna do on both sides. This side now, I'm gonna bring it up to the center. Guideline falls out. Now what's happening when I pull this hair up into the center? It's over directing. What happens when we over direct? When we over direct, it pushes weight away from where we're pulling it to. So if I'm pulling it away uh, towards my body, it's gonna push the most weight away from my body. So right here, bring this hair up, cut line and you can see how this starts to build a really nice kind of lob shape to it medium length haircut feel now these little pieces are going beyond the perimeter that we knew was going to happen that's what we can go in and take off later i'm going to do the same thing on the hopefully you're getting some ideas to share with your hairdresser here so we lift the hair up just like that and we're going to cut it all being brought to that center point just like this point cut through now maybe we break down point cutting just a little bit. One of the things that I like to do with point cutting, uh, and we talked about this in our virtual cutting club classes, but one of the things I like to do with point cutting is point towards your buddy and back at your body. Towards your buddy, back at your body, and that's how you cut. You don't wanna come this way, lifting your elbow up and cutting into it, because look what happens. As I cut into it, that blade is attacking my finger. If I shift it like this, my elbow goes down, so I'm more comfortable, and then the blade that's coming at my finger is being blocked by the steady blade. So I can actually go through here and not worry about cutting myself because I feel this blade rubbing across my hand. So I just come down, cut and come through and cut. So work on that motion as you come through and you're cutting the hair so that you can kind of decide. Now, if you wanna cut a precise line when point cutting, you're gonna go in and come at more of an angle and you can work that precise line. If you wanna remove just a tiny bit of weight within haircut, you would go and start shifting your hand up. The more of an angle, it gets more T to the section, right? T to the section. This is gonna take out very little weight. So you'll be removing just tiny little bits. So if I bring the example over here, I comb her hair up, I've got a nice little line in here. And if I go in straight on like this, I'm barely taking out any. So if I'm here, comb the hair up and I cut like this, I'm not taking out any hair. If I wanna remove, this takes out quite a bit of hair. Draw your line across and then just come directly in like this and soften that line. So hard line through, cut it blunt like this, be even harder, or, and then at the end, you can just soften it a little bit. Great point, my knuckles are scared for life. Love it. Rachel, thanks so much. Everybody, uh, Colleen, thank you. Lisa, thank you. Very cool to see all of you guys in there. Thanks thanks for joining today. Now, super simple in the, the other two sides, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna lift this up. We've obviously got our length underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to back out. I'm gonna show you guys this little trick here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my guest. I'm gonna tell her to tilt her head just slightly towards me like this in the chair. It's the beauty of working with a client. They can help you create a nice little style. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab all of this hair. I'm gonna lift it up over her head and I can see the guidelines start to fall out. So right here, this is all the little hairs that we cut blunt at the bottom. So when I start seeing that and I can see it kind of through here, see my guide from the rest, I can go through, lift it up, and point cut my length across. So just like this, point cut my length across, kind of connecting it to that back point. But again, not pulling in this perimeter because I wanna keep that perimeter uh, nice and then there we go again, some nice length to it. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Let your guest do some of the work, have them tilt towards you just slightly. That way, because there's a chair here, that way you can comfortably get everything over. If you wanna lean over the chair and pull it up, you can do that too. 
So here we go. Grab just a little bit of that hair as a guideline. Bring it all up to me at this point and point cut through. Now what's happening to the front pieces of this haircut? These pieces here. They're going to be a little bit longer. Why are they going to be a little bit longer? Because the forehead starts to move forward. So there's a little bit more over direction of that piece because we're cutting everything straight up. So all of this is being cut straight up. And because it's being cut straight up, you're going to get that little bit of extra length. So now we've got a nice medium length haircut that has a, a really solid foundation. That's number one really solid foundation. This cut, which has a really solid foundation in the base area here, but then the layers that just fall over top of it, that have a ton of movement because of the point cutting. So that's the, the key thing that I want you guys to think about as you go through these haircuts is everything has to have a purpose. It has to have a reason uh, of why it works. Haircutting is not complicated, but if you don't know what you're doing, if you haven't been through these scenarios, if you don't understand hair texture, type, density, all that stuff, then you're not going to understand how simple it is. It becomes simple because you learn and you learn how to kind of manipulate the situation. So underneath here, solid baseline over top of it, broken line. Now what I want to do is I want to go through here in this area right here. And I want to kind of fine tune it just by bringing this hair down and cutting into with a point cut technique, a little bit of that baseline of the haircut. So right here, you can see where some of that passes by. Lily thinks one side's longer than the other. Probably that's okay. Uh, we are going to work through that right now. We're working the perimeter uh, of the cut. Now what I want to do is I want to comb down wide teeth, wide teeth through the hair, and I'm just going to soften that line around the perimeter. Same thing here, point cutting. I don't want a blunt line now. I want it to be nice and soft. Got much more modern feel to it uh, as we cut through. So here, these are the pieces Lily's talking about right here. So this stuff, we're all, we're gonna cut it all off. It's the disconnection from the elevation that we did. This side is a little bit, um, I overdirected it more. And so that's really what it is. This is the weaker side too. So both sides of the haircut are not exactly the same. So like as you're working through a haircut, if they part their hair on the side, like this one, she parts it over here to this side show you guys so she parts over to this side here so she's gonna have a little bit different lengths um, because one side has this much hair and the other side has you know this much hair so but I can see my guide right through there and that's what I'm aiming for so point cut this mannequin does not have thick hair uh, Andrea just so you know this is actually super thin not super thin I obviously have clients that have a little bit thinner hair than this but she doesn't have thick hair and if you saw it at the beginning it's very very light density um it looks full because of what we just did but it does not it's not a full hair mannequin I actually the Erica mannequin that I use that has brunette hair is much thicker feeling and then some of the other ones have even thicker this one is the thinnest hair mannequin you can see the scalp of her um, as you're working through so don't be don't be discouraged and these techniques will definitely make somebody with fine hair way fuller also has a nice blowout from danielle as well so you're seeing that some of that volume in there and i'm going to show you guys a couple other techniques that will make it look a little fuller so let me see where we're at see if we have any uh questions you make it look so easy so now i got paul mitchell pro tools wand here if i can get it to wants to focus on her face there you go pop this thing on here uh it's got a kind of a this nozzle goes in a cone shape in a way. So it starts, what I like is it starts a little bit wider. So when I put the hair into it, I get a little bit tighter wave towards the mid shaft, and, but not super tight at the base. Uh, the base, I just want to create a little extra volume, which is going to give me, uh, this is going to give me the volume and then this will give me a little extra twist. And then the ends, I don't actually even wrap around this. And I'm also going to use my Ergo diamond head brush. This is available on our online store as well. Uh, Shop FSE. Uh, those of you guys that are OGs in the chat, can you please write Shop FSE? Uh, put the link in there so everybody can see it uh, on all the different platforms i'd really appreciate that let's see here i can pop it up as well but shop fse if you guys are looking for brushes scissors our new tri razor uh, which is this tool here not really using it today but just give it a little shout out uh, this is our tri razor it's got a three tools in one it cuts 100 percent of the hair 25 percent and 50 percent all in one tool we're shipping that worldwide so if you want to purchase it go to our online store. Keep posting that in the uh, chat for me, guys. You guys are the best. I just want to be a little organic with the way that I pull these pieces out. And then I'm just going to softly bring it around the iron. And I want to put it in kind of a uh, ribbon motion. So not putting it all together. I'll show you guys what I mean. So right there, you can see how it kind of just lays in a nice ribboned pattern. What I mean by don't just kind of clump it all together is take a section and wrap it kind of on top of itself like this, unless you're looking for tighter curls. If you're just looking to add a little bit of wave to the hair, in turn will create some fullness to fine hair. You go through it just like that and uh, wave it. So underneath here, I'll just give it a little 
bend at the base. I have a booklet of all the items in our online store. Um, I do not have a booklet, but we have a website. So you could just go to the website. We, I just redid it too. We got snowed in, so spent the day redoing our online store. It looks super cool. There's tons of videos on there and it's a little more interactive than it used to be, um, which is pretty cool. Just working everything off of the face. So you can buy this uh, wand iron on Paul Mitchell's website for sure. It's cool too, because these, uh, it's called Unclipped, Express Ion Unclipped. Uh, it's one of my favorite things because these, I can't, I'm not gonna try to take this off right now because I'll probably burn myself, but these, oh, there we go. You can unlock it. Look at that. I'm probably not gonna be able to get it back on. Yeah, you can unlock it and lock it and you can get, it comes with different attachments. You can buy other ones. It's a bunch of tools in one, which I always enjoy being able to change it up a little bit. So just go to paulmitchell.com. Get that there. And I'm not leaving the hair in it too long. For one, I don't want to create damage. Two, you don't need to. I'm just creating a soft kind of defined wave in the hair. And we'll assess the rest of that in a second. Let's see, I'll spray a little bit. Mitchell worked up. Uh, this is a great flexible hold hairspray. Um, what I love about this hairspray, why it's one of my favorites is because it's dry. So um, you can kind of use quite a bit of it and it doesn't make the hair feel sticky, uh, which is another good thing for fine hair because it makes the hair feel thicker and you can lay it, overlay it uh, multiple times and it doesn't weigh the hair down. Three pieces around it too. Sorry, just stood in front of you guys. So number one, I just love the fullness of this haircut and how it works, how easy it is to do. So you can see kind of the blunt edge of it how it really kind of works through allowing the fullness on the bottom, but tons of movement throughout the rest. So, you know, if somebody had even finer hair than this, that is one thing that I think a lot of people are like, you know, this mannequin, uh, they're not believing that it has super fine hair, uh, which is totally fine. If you had finer hair than this, if you believe that your guest has finer hair than this, then what I would say is go through it and just don't elevate these layers as much. So don't pull them straight up to the ceiling, pull them out like here and then build the weight off of that perimeter line and then you'd have a full uh, feeling throughout here you wouldn't have these shorter pieces within the cut so that would give it even more fullness as you uh kind of work through so i wouldn't blow dry your hair flat because then it wouldn't create as much volume in here so being able to go in and uh you know just give it a little bit of a, a style with the wand iron uh maybe blow dry it with a round brush and then just hit it with the wand iron a little bit to just create that wave in the body in there and then that helps helps your shape expand. Like thicker hair might kind of get this look if it has a tiny bit of wave to it, it might already have this look. Fine hair is gonna lay flatter. So then you need to do something to enhance that wave. Um, and going in with the products, like I talked about, lighter weight um, hairsprays, like worked up, Paul Mitchell worked up, is uh, you can go in, it mists over the hair, it doesn't sit heavy. Like some, some other hairsprays, finishing sprays, they go in the hair wet uh, and they get kind of clumpy. Worked up, you can really just keep working through the hair and building more and more volume and body throughout it. So I think the overlaying of products really helps build the body in uh, in your fine hair as well. What if the client wants to keep their hair length long, but their hair is weak? Adele, great question. We kind of talked about this already though. When you look at a client that has longer hair, but it looks weak, you gotta cut it. Unless they don't mind it looking weak. That's the thing too, like clients might like it weak looking. So at, at that point, you just, you can just do what you can. You don't layer it more because if you layer it more, uh, it's gonna get even weaker. Um, so what I would do with them is discuss the options, which is taking it shorter to that the point where they have the most density. That's my opinion uh, as a professional. And then if they steer away from that opinion, then that's on them. But I'll let them know that, that my recommendation is to take it up. If they don't want to take it up, it's kind of up to them at that point. But it's really important to, to fill them with as much knowledge as you have with fine hair, products, styling, uh, choices, multiple different looks that they could do, um, you know, with this length of hair. Hair, they could wear it kind of smoothed out if they wanted to, but give them some products to plump it up. Powdery products, drier products, uh, kind of stack them on there. And then, you know, then they have options and they see what the style can do. And once you've given them that knowledge, then they might make a better choice. If you're just like, oh, okay, you don't, you want it long? Let me do that. Then you're gonna, you're kind of causing yourself trouble because you, they're not gonna like it in the long run. 
and they didn't take your advice. So really fun hanging out with you guys today. Had a blast. I uh, can't wait till next Tuesday. So remember, these classes are always on Tuesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have other classes coming up, but uh, next week it'll definitely be on Tuesday. So be on the lookout. Make sure you set that notification bell. So if you're on YouTube, hit the reminder bell. Also on Facebook, you can hit a reminder as well. So anytime I do anything on live, I post a video, you guys will know um, and you guys can follow along. Remember, do me a favor. Anytime you see me doing anything on the internet, just hit the share button and tag me in it so I can say thank you. I appreciate you guys supporting everything that's happening here at Free Salon Education. If you want to get some tools, you want to support the channel even more, uh, you can get combs, clips, brushes, tools, everything that we used on this video. Uh, on our online store. You can also pick up a tri razor uh, on there as well, which is, you know, if you're worldwide, you want to purchase something from our store, you can get the tri razor on there for $44.95. Uh, three tools in one. You can cut textured hair, thick hair, skinny hair, wet hair, dry hair. You do everything with it. Uh, it's a super fun tool to use. Check it out on Shop FSE. Over there. And uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much.